Morning my friends, from the old city of Plovdiv, the very old city as you can see, as Plovdiv is a, is a city that dates back, I mean the first human settlements in here, in where Plov Plovdiv is now, date back from 8,000, 8,000 years ago. Plovdiv, as you can see human, uh, Roman uh, remains. It was a city in the Roman times, actually before Roman times. The, the original name of the city was uh, Philippopolis, because uh, Plovdiv was, um, was conquered by Philip. Always we go back to the same stories, like in Skopje. The this, site this here was, was conquered by uh, Philip II of Macedon, the father of Alexander the Great, and then he called the city Philippopolis. Beautiful old town of Plovdiv. Isn't it great? Well, yeah, so the city was called Philippopolis. And um, then in the 6th century, I guess, the Slavic tribes started to arrive and to conquer the Balkans. And so. Let's go which way? Huh? Let's go this way. So the Slavic tribes uh, came, started to arrive in the Balkans and conquer the Balkans. So the Bulgarian arrived. So it was the start of the establishment of the of the Bulgarian empires in the region. But the city, but this city uh, still was called uh, Philippopolis. And then it was called Philippopolis, so as I was saying, all the way to the, to the Turkish invasion, well, the Ottoman invasion in the 14th or 15th century. I guess it's a monastery. Well, yeah, so basically the, the city it was called Philippopolis, all the way to the Turkish, to the Ottoman invasion. Then the Ottomans changed its, changed the, its name to something, well, something I don't know. And, um, and the city was occupied by the Ottomans for 500 years. And, and after uh, the Bulgarians took back control of the region, uh, well, the, the, the city was renamed Plovdiv. So that's, uh, well, that's quickly the, the story of the, of the city. It was called Philippopolis by, uh, so Philippopolis, as you can see, polis means city in Greek. So by Philip of Macedon, who was uh, a Greek, well, culturally Greek, as I explained in the video in, uh, in Skopje. The Macedonians in the in the antiquity, those who were called the Macedonians, were uh, culturally Greek, and um, yeah. So it, it, Plovdiv was called Philippopolis. Then came uh, then it changed name when the Ottomans came and occupied the city for 500 years, and then it was called Plovdiv when the Bulgarians took back the control of the over the region. looks like that's the ethnographic museum. Very beautiful building. So what's interesting, because the city is, uh, is so old, it's interesting because it has uh, some uh, Roman uh, remains, actually, right in the city center as you will see, and uh, well, and it's uh, generally a beautiful city, all these, look at that. All the area of the city center is very nice. Very old, uh, old style architecture. It changes a lot from what you usually see in Bulgaria, which is uh, often it's uh, communist style buildings. 
soulless communist style buildings. They're quite depressing, very grey, quite depressing when here you have more colourful houses with more fancy architecture. It makes it more interesting. Actually, it's funny also, uh, Plovdiv, is, uh, the fact, I mean, for me it's funny to be in Plovdiv because uh, probably on my, uh, as I am on a long journey towards Africa and I travel slowly, it's probably my last kind of normal European city uh, for quite a, quite a long time. So it's, uh, so for me it's fun, it's, it's kind of weird to be for the last time in a city where I kind of, kind of, well even though I, uh, my culture, my French culture is far from, uh, from a uh, Slavic culture, but still, I mean, I'm European. Euro all European, all European culture, European cultures look like each other. And uh, so I kind of still, uh, I'm, I'm still able to feel, to feel at home here. While after, when I will enter Turkey, when I will start to uh, arrive in the, in the Islamic world, in the Middle East, well, obviously I will, I will feel less at home because it will be much more different from, uh, from my culture. It will be a completely different world. So it's weird for me to, to feel at home in a city for the last time before, uh, before quite a long time. So in this sense, I'm very happy to be, to be in Plovdiv and to enjoy Plovdiv for quite some time. Because it's like I'm, I'm just taking a, the last sips of, a, of European culture, of Judeo-Christian European culture, before going to the Middle East, before entering the Islamic world, and then before entering uh, the African world. Okay, so let's have a... Now that I presented you the big picture of Plovdiv and the small picture for my, for my journey, let's have a look at Plovdiv. You see, there is a plate in French, actually. It says uh, that in this house, the French poet Lamartine uh, received the hospitality during his uh, travel to, to the Middle East in July 1833. So here stayed Alphonse. I think it's that. Well, the French viewers, you can correct me. I would say Alphonse de Lamartine. Here we arrive at the famous tourist site. Is it the cat? No, I'm disturbing the I'm disturbing the cat. Here it is. Well, so obviously it's the Roman theater. I guess you you, you might have guessed. It's a well preserved Roman theater. And you can see there also the hills. You see there is one hill. Well, I am we are on one hill. Just in front there is one hill where there is a statue there, there is another hill. There there is another hill. And in the backdrop you can see the mountains. And here we arrive in the, um, the typical main street of a European city, which is a walking street full of fancy shops. But... Uh, this one is different than others because it has something special. Something very special, very different from every other European cities. So here you have a, well, a historical building, but the main thing is that, that, so basically just in front is the main street, as I said, the main walking street that goes on this way all the way there, but the thing is like, the main street was actually built on top of a, of a Roman stadium. So that's, 
That's called the uh, Filippopolis Stadium. And it was a stadium in Roman times where for horses and for, you know, carts races and, well, horse carts races and, uh, and stuff like that. It's, it's unbelievable to me. Look at those, this marble that is like, uh, was carved uh, more than 2,000 years ago. It's right in the city center, it's funny. So let's go have a look under it. Just a quick look. Yes. I love those stones that were carved like 2,000 years ago. It's fascinating to imagine the horses running here, probably people dying in the show, and the crowds cheering with a complete different morality before the arrival of, uh, of Christianity, of Islam. Okay, now let's go to the. Let's quickly go to the market to buy some. Uh, well, to buy some things for breakfast. <laughs> well, I might not eat flowers, but I think inside it should be some, some fruits, maybe some dry fruits, maybe some nuts. Hey, look, they have walnuts everywhere. Maybe they'll get uh, almost fresh walnuts. Maybe they'll get some. Wow, look at that. No, no. Eh? What? Cannot? Why? Forbidden? Government? Okay, let's buy some uh, walnuts. Can I get half, half kilo? Half kilo, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.